This is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right. How you guys doing? Come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to the art of wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Cole Cabana. Hello. Okay. I also haven't done this in so long, so let me see if I can remember this. Uh, this is a free podcast uh, supported by people just like you. We used to give it to you every Thursday for 10 years. Now this is a surprise in your podcast feed. The best ways that you could support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Why would you do that? It's not really even a podcast anymore. Uh, you could go over to Wrestling Anonymous, my brand new weekly podcast. <laughs> go over there, tell a story, uh, um, tell a wrestling story, tell an anonymous story. I bet everyone here is going to have a story about how uh, J.D. Drake wanted to eat more sausages than you in a contest. That would be a great story to tell. Uh, the best way that you can support, though, coltmerch.com or digitalcolt.com or after the show, uh, Colt Table slash makeshift meet and greet area will be available right here to the right of the stage. Uh, I am joined uh, not necessarily live from my studio in Chicago, Illinois, but I am live at All Out Festivities brought to you by Pro Wrestling Tees in front of a live Studio audience. All right. I'm pretty sure I did that in the uh, not correct order. But when I do these live shows, it's more of a fun, feel-good show. And I usually like to bring out a co-host to hang out with me and talk with the wrestlers with me. And uh, I like to go with my number one draft pick. He is Chicago, Illinois' number one stand-up comedian and number one depressed wrestling fan, Marty DeRosa! Hey. Wow. It literally goes Marty DeRosa, <laughs> then Bernie Mac uh, <laughs> in the order of number one comedians. It's good to be uh, out in the suburbs. Remember the last time we were out in the suburbs, just me and you? Yeah, I think well, my mom cooked us. No. Uh, no. No, we went to the exotic expo at the uh, convention center. <laughs> I thought we weren't going to talk about it's that. It's like Marty. WrestleCon for porn. It was uh, wonderful. You got to support the indie talent. It's not all about the superstars. Yeah. Marty, I, I'm on billboards all over the city for the last 10 years. Yes. And it's me, sometimes Erlacher, yes. Man Cow, but yes. also the gosh darn advertisements <laughs> for that exotic, erotic <laughs> uh, fan con. And one year I was like, Marty... I got to go to this thing. I thought we were going to interview somebody. I'm like, are you going to have a porn star on the podcast? He goes, no, nope, we're just going. I go, ooh, okay. Yes. And uh, some of you I recognize from there, but I won't say who. Uh, we do have a fun show. Hopefully this is as fun as a woman talking about how good anal is you for your mental health. <laughs> do you remember what happened when we, we went into a Q&A, which they have Q&As at the porn convention, which is wild. And nobody was asking questions, so Colt goes, ask a question. So I raise my hand and I go, how can you guys play those backstage casting couch uh, videos if these women don't know what's going on? And they go, they're fake, you idiot, get out of here. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> For those listening at home, there you go. about eight fans yelled out, it's still real. Hey, you me. and you are now best friends, so get together. And your journey starts today here in the suburbs. Uh, before we bring out our first guest, uh, I, I do want everyone to know that there is beer available. There's a dunk take available. Uh, and there's also, uh, there was a, a menu that I got. And I was told that I just have to remind everybody. Marty and I are going to kind of listen. These are some of the items for sale. Uh, they're AEW themed. And I uh, just want to have to. This, they're uh, available at the Hot Dog and a Handshake Cafe yes. over there. Management said we had to tell you about yes. this, so um, uh, should I go first? Absolutely. Go first with this uh, totally right. not made up uh, wrestling menu. Not at all. Uh, there's a six pack of old style <laughs> pack, and uh, you could put those in your red Aaron Solo cups. <laughs> Uh, this this item you is. You don't 
<laughs> you don't boo puns. <laughs> That's my next shirt available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Cole Cabana. Thank you. Uh, this one is, is off of our kosher menu uh, for any of the uh, Jewish people out there. This is a uh, bacon double Goldberger um, available for a very limited time only. Okay. I did say Marty, AEW talent only. Oh, we'll, okay. We'll All right. Uh, there hey, is he's the big surprise at the end. I'm so sorry to spoil it. <laughs> you don't boo good spoilers. Uh, there's also the 18 ounce prime beef Chuck Taylor. Oh. Uh. Uh, that's not my favorite cut of steak. My favorite cut of steak is the Tony Concarne steak with mustard. <laughs> Uh, there's some sides here that are for sale. Britt Baker's homemade, creamy, wet, tangy Adam Coleslaw. Oh, I see what you did there. Oh, boy. <laughs> Anybody want some breakfast? Try the Little John Silver Dollar Pancakes. Yes, well done. Why did I think of that one? Uh, not to be confused with your Gold Burger, there is an Excalibur Burger available. Oh, and that's gonna, that will come with Aubrey Edwards cheese. And you can dip it in a little bit of BBQT Marshall sauce. <laughs> uh, any coffee drinkers out there? I know it's gonna be a long day. You wanna get caffeinated. Uh, so make sure to get some of that AEW dark roast coffee. Wow, okay. <laughs> Is that a dark order joke? No, do AEW dark AW and dark, dark roast oh, coffee. Wow. If you want to put some wow. QT marshmallows in there, it's totally okay. <laughs> nice. Came back with it. Very nice. And last but not least, get yourself a Chicago-style hot dog, but for some reason they're selling them on Paul White Bread. Wow! <laughs> but I'll tell you what, keep it Chicago and throw on two Sean Pickle Spears. Colt's a real health nut. Whenever we get breakfast, he has to get Paul Egg Whites uh, in his omelet. And uh, we have the 9-11 anniversary coming up. Uh, Wait, what joke is coming after this? You I, sure you're, you're good with this? I'm glad you heard that. You went, what? Uh, yes, with your burger, don't forget to get some Maxwell Jacob Freedom Fries. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. That's the uh, menu over there. Feel free to tip your waitresses and waiters and wait staff. Thank you very much. Uh, Marty, you ready yeah. to get this party started? I would love to get this party started. How did started. you feel about that pun-based uh, Oh, It menu. hurt real bad. <laughs> uh, some of those went over really well, and uh, some of those went over like uh, Booker T and Buff Bagwell uh, <laughs> on that first Nitro. Marty, I told you to keep it to AE. Sorry, I'm so sorry. That went over like Colt and some <laughs> local guy from New York on AEW Dark. All right. <laughs> uh, well, I should have stuck with that. All right. Uh, uh, let's bring our first guest to the stage. So excited to uh, bring you this performer. He is a friend. He is a uh, express. I have a ba I have bad intros, ladies and gentlemen. Marco Stunt. Of all the intros you've gotten, how how good was that one? That was uh, <laughs> that was the best one I've ever gotten. Better than Justin Roberts, everybody. <laughs> Would you say I'm? I'm. I think I'm Jewier than Justin Roberts. I'm Jewish. He's Jewish. Marco can't say that. Wow. Yeah. I really know how to win an audience over, huh? That's why you'll be seeing me on the pay-per-view tonight. <laughs> Third row with all of you. <laughs> Man of the people, Cole Cabana. Got me a good ticket. Marco, how are you, friend? I'm alive and well, living short as ever. Uh, now, you said that. I didn't. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, now, I want to get your consent before I can talk about your size. Go for it. All right. Am I the nicest person ever because I asked that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Marty and I were talking before. Who is it the most uncomfortable to walk up to in the back? And can we assume it's Paul White? It, it's, it's definitely Paul White when he doesn't expect it. Which is all the time because he doesn't look down. <laughs> Where do you come up to on his body? <laughs> Colt asks the hard-hitting questions that Dave oh, Meltzer no! just won't do. Well, if his hip's about right here, <laughs> and I turn around, yeah. I get about this. <laughs> 
Hey, you know what they say about Paul White? His hips don't lie. <laughs> Do they say that? <laughs> I don't know if they said that. Neither does his new one. Right? Oh, I think topical. No, that's topical. Tony Khan bought him a new hip, I can only assume. <laughs> uh, Marco, how's everything going? Wrestling, this must be exciting. Uh, I'm going to, oh, not I'm going to assume. I know you kind of got your big buzz. Uh, I think it was, I believe it was on a GCW show. Is that correct? That is correct. It was oh, a battle royal. Is that right? Uh, no, 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 no. Not it right is, uh, at all. Journalist, perfectionist, <laughs> Colt Cabana. Uh, keep turning off the damn thing. Uh, well, I was. It, it was uh, a viral clip. I know that. It was. Yeah. There was a there was a part where I got brought in to do an open challenge, and I was actually in the crowd. Uh, KTB was in the ring. Kyle the Beast. Uh, he was waiting, and uh, they were looking around, and I didn't know my cue, and so I was just kind of sitting in the back. I thought they were, he was going to take the mic and say something, and he never did. So I just had my coke, and I was just sipping my coke in the third row, and uh, where you'll be tonight. Uh, Thank you, Tony Khan. Got me some good seats. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, I, it got awkward, and I was like, oh, maybe I should just start walking up to the front. So I start walking up. I'm like, hey, I'll do it. Hey. Hey. And everybody started laughing. It was great. Um, but uh, Mr. Bryce Rimsburg, he's around here somewhere, came up to me, came out to the guardrail. He's like, you want to do it? And I jumped the guardrail and then uh, walked up, and I said, am I allowed to cuss on here? I don't know. Should he be able to cuss? Okay, I'll, I'll give the full story then. Ear, earmuffs, earmuffs. Yeah, if you need to cover your child's ears <laughs> for this next part. She could give uh. two shits. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I get up in the ring, and he, uh, he's talking, and he says, Marco, Marco, how even old? He said, how old are you even? I don't even know how, how old are you anyways. He said something. He asked me how old I was is what he said. Words. And so I stole the mic from him. Crowd went, oh. I said, you want to know how old I am? Old enough to fuck your mom. Jesus. I didn't know that was coming. <laughs> I'm so sorry, little girl. That was the Joey Janela line. I'm so sorry. I'm for, so sorry. For the people listening, Colt's apologizing to a baby. I would say a negative one-year-old baby. A negative, negative one-year-old? One. So after that happens and you get to your phone, do you have like 8 million messages? And yeah. People I, who weren't nice to you are all of a sudden like, hey, man, I've always believed in you. Yeah. yeah. I've, got, I've got, I mean, I don't want you to like name, well, I, I do want you to tell stories, but I don't want you to name names, but there must have been so many people, like, I would only assume, and you could tell me if I'm right or wrong, of the, of the day you walked into training camp of just being, people being like, what are you even doing? Can I assume that's correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, was it? Just numerous, or did you have people in your corner pushing you forward? Well, when I when I got in, me and my buddies had gone to this little independent show that was like ten minutes away from my from my house at the time, and it was at some church on the corner, and it, was, it fit like a hundred people in the gym. There's probably thirty though, and uh, we enjoyed the show. It was great. It was a fun time. We'd never seen anything like that. We had all, we had like gone to some WWE events uh, growing up in high school and stuff. But this was nothing like that. Uh, so we we were like, hey, we should we should see what it takes to get in this. And we so they were like saying hello to the wrestlers and stuff. And so we were, we decided, okay, let's go up and say hi. So we go over there and and immediately uh, the the guy we talked to looked over looked over at my friend who is six five, three hundred pounds. Hell yeah, <laughs> big boys, big boy. Uh, they immediately loved him. They wanted him. They were like, yeah, you guys can come. Come on. They gave us a shit price. And uh, we, we went up there. And uh, they beat my ass on the first day. Like, bad. I, uh, power bombs, choke slams, oh. uh, top rope bumps. It was like... First Jeez. day of wrestling first, school? First day. My first day was like, can you do a forward roll? Yours is, you're going to get power bombed off the top rope. Yeah. Did you they watch did, Tough Enough and you're like, that wasn't the first day on Tough Enough. <laughs> Go to the top and fall off. I just need you to fall to the floor from the top <laughs> rope real fast. Just let me see something. Um, and then who was your first match against? It was against a girl in the middle of Mississippi. Uh, I believe her name was Brittany. 
uh, and I lost in about three minutes. I was wearing white skinny jeans that I uh, bought from American Eagle. A little stretch on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. AKA highspots.com. <laughs> It's a good time. Uh, yeah. That that spiraled uh, after a little while to a little bit of a uh, little bit of. I couldn't love what's happening more <laughs> in my life. Hi. This, <laughs> love you too. this is everything that wrestling is right now. <laughs> For those of you at home, we're doing a live show. A man in the neonest jacket just walked up to the middle of the stage <laughs> to take a picture of Marco, and he is loving every second. Of All right. It. There we go. The newest member of the Jurassic Express. Give it up for him. Yeah. <laughs> we, that happened once. We don't encourage it to happen again. Uh, speaking of, of Jurassic Express, yes. um, can you just uh, kind of explain how it all came together for you guys? Uh... <laughs> He, he just pulled the microphone to the side the legit and said, story? you want the legit story? <laughs> I mean, you can do whatever yeah. you want. All right, so uh, I got you guys. Um, so I... He's like, I was hunting for dinosaurs. Yes. I, I was in the jungle <laughs> uh, at about three years old. And, no, I'm just fucking around. Yeah, how, uh, did, how, did, how did you guys become a threesome? We, uh, so I got contacted by Cody to do All In. After the GCW thing, um, thank you. Uh, that was cool. That was amazing. That was the biggest experience of my life. The battle royal was insane. Uh, I then broke my leg though, uh, and I was out for a while, like five months or so, which was not not enough time at all. I should have been out like a year. But uh, is that the wind? I think so. That's a giant dinosaur coming from behind. God. Not happy about the answer that's we met right at the now. Olive Garden. Why are you lying? <laughs> so I, uh, I, had, I did the battle royal, and then I broke my leg a few months, a uh, month later, and then I got contacted uh, by Cody again. And he said, "Are you going to be good for Double or Nothing?" I said, "I certainly can be," <laughs> and he's like, "Good to hear." And so I, I didn't hear from him for a while, and then. Uh, I, I got the official message. Hey, I'm gonna be with. Uh, I'm gonna be in the battle royal again. Uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus were also in that battle royal, though, uh, and they were already a thing on the indies. I had been contacted and asked, "Hey, how would you feel about teaming with Jungle Boy as a tag team?" Which is what it started as, and then they they killed it in the battle royal. They're they're such a good team together, and then. I, I was asked, hey, how do you, do you guys want to just be a, a, a trio? And I said, yeah. And, and, uh, and that's, that's basically how that there was. It is. And then we, we did it on BTE, how uh, MJF was being an asshole, as uh, usual. And then uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus came over and they brought me out and I came out at uh, Fighter Fest, I believe. Or Fight for the Fallen. Fight for the Fallen, maybe. And the rest is history. The rest is history. Here we are at All yeah. Out. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Marco Stunt, everybody. Thank you, Marco. Thanks, bud. Sure, I got it. Hell yeah. All right. The rest is history. Hard-hitting questions. Thank you. Very good. I'm a... What was Bobby Heenan? A, a broadcast journalist. A broadcast journalist. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have some more hard-hitting questions okay. for our next... Uh, well, it's it's two guests, but oh. I, I had a request. Okay. So uh, please uh, let me welcome to the stage Anthony Bowens and Max Caster, the acclaim. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Here you go. We'll let there Bowens. Go. Um, oh, here, Marty, you, you you're going to move over. All right, here. You could sit here. No, Marty, you're going to. Marty. Oh, you want me in the middle? Marty. All right. Ed McMahon right. never sits right, right. right next right. to you're right. Come on. There we go. There's an Ed McMahon reference for nobody who gets that. Let me start. Andy Richter doesn't sit right next there to you. There you go. There you go. Uh, hello, Acclaimed. I, I've, hello, sir. Uh, first of all, Max, unbelievable rap performance right before this podcast. Thank you very much. I agree. I'm glad you agree. Uh, what I have requested is I... I, I I wrestled you on AEW Dark before, and I 
wanted to come up with a rap of my own. And so I sat down with my mother, and it's on YouTube, and we went through how to make a rap. And my mom is known for her uh, poems and raps at bar mitzvahs over the years, and she took me through her process. So I thought that was something uh, we could do together here. Uh, now, I want to make sure Bowens gets some, some time on the mic. So maybe, Bowens, can you... Well, well I'll say this. Anthony's very involved in the process Great. of writing the rap. Great. So this is then something I did not know. This is information hard hitting journalism. Very hard. Colt Col grew up reading Word Up magazine, so he knows all the questions to ask rappers. This is listen. It was all a dream, okay? I uh, thank you very much. Okay. So I, I thought. I mean, who better than maybe uh, Marco, who was just out here? I don't want you dissing me anymore. You already told me nobody listens to this podcast. <laughs> When you do that sometimes, where you're like, I'm so sorry. No. Okay, that's good. I like that. So let's say a, a person like Marco Stunt. What would be the process? And how is Bones involved? Um, so what I do sometimes is I'll just take a look at our opponents, and I'll be like, what, what stands out to me when I think Marco, I think Nickelodeon, I think Rugrats, I think Wild Thornberries, and I'm like, how can you expand upon that? And then he goes and he does his thing. So and you're, what, what's that called? Creative writing? It's spitballing? Brainstorming. 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 I thought someone just laughed at me saying creative writing, but I hope that was a side joke over, over to the side. Okay, brainstorming. So yeah, um, like Anthony said, there's the comparisons to Rugrats, comparisons to Wild Thornberries. Uh, he puts it on his gear a little bit. Now, Wild Thornberries was, that was uh, the band with Tom Petty, is that correct? <laughs> That's for the boomers out there. <laughs> they weren't paying attention. We got them back with that one. I have no clue what are the you wild about the, uh, are. Yeah, the traveling Wilburys. Yes, I yeah. was. Uh, what, what a reference! It, this is a uh, no. This is a TV show. Yeah. Many of us would uh, remember that. Not Colt. Big, big wild Thornberries pop. So you go for that, and then you think, okay, what else about Marco? He's short. He has weird hair. He's from the South. A lot of low-hanging fruit there, so it's it, it starts writing itself. So the first thing that is uh, done in the acclaim rap, the most important thing is to say our name when we come out. So you'll always hear me say it's Platinum Max or it's the acclaimed and, and it's almost like improv, Colt. It's the acclaimed and mm. something. No, <laughs> that's yes and yes and Colt. That was only for three people. And then we go from there. Um, so I, I have a good first line, and then maybe we could sit down all together and Absolutely. hash out the, the low-hanging fruit. Okay. This is what the Wu-Tang Clan did. Yeah. 100%. I'm RZA, Anthony's Jizza, you guys are Inspecting Beck, and you God. Mm. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm more Juza, I think. <laughs> so the first, first line I have... The acclaimed is here. You must be kidding me. I didn't know Jungle Boy had a mini me. Ah, does mini me and kidding me rhyme? It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> I thought epitome would, would rhyme better. I mean, we can keep going on this rhyme scheme if you'd like. <laughs> All right, I'm the, what was it again? The acclaimed is here. You must be kidding me. I didn't know Jungle Boy had a mini me. Mini me. And then I would go right back with, I am the epitome, and then you would do, this isn't my rhyme, this is yours, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> You're seeing how difficult it is to be me. <laughs> Besides me, who is the, the, the most annoying person coming up and wanting to help you with raps in the back? Nick Camarado. <laughs> I'll yo, tell you what. Yo, yo, yo. I'll tell you what, Nick, Nick has some good lines, but I can use none of them. We're talking about me getting a 30-day suspension. That, like this. <laughs> yes. If you said Nick's line, he's out for two years. Huh? Yeah, I, I mean, you're doing a prison sentence, possibly. It's a, a hate, hate crime stuff. All right, so what else, what else would we have? I mean, okay, what rhymes with, is, do I say to myself, what rhymes with wild thornberry? You could. 
uh, Cherry, Harry, Harry? Harry, oh yeah. Dingleberry, I heard. <laughs> Bray Wyatt's uncle's Barry? <laughs> Wyndham? I don't know. No. <laughs> Gary Gaetti from there the Minnesota go. Twins? Gaetti, comma, Gary. <laughs> um, so let's say Wild Thornberries is the next line. Okay. So then, of course, if you're me, you go to rhymezone.com, you jog your brain a little bit. Rhymezone. Big plug for Rhymezone. They're a huge sponsor of me. And um, so Wild Thornberries, let's say Harry. Yeah. Harry, I can make that rhyme. Okay. Harrys.com, yep. use the code Colt for 20% off. So then I'll say something like, Damn, Marco, why you so hairy? You look like the kid from the Wild Thornberries. Okay. And so that's the next two bars. What, a, what about something like, you so little, you're, you probably got no pubes that are hairy. Uh, like, you, you so little, your balls ain't hairy. There it is. Fuck. So close. So yeah. close. It's, it's a lot of things about syllables. Yeah. You can't put too many, can't put too but few. But you saw where I was going for, and then uh, you cleaned it up. Absolutely. Well done. And that happens a lot. Anthony will throw something in. I'll, I'll walk around to, to pitch it to someone, like, hey, what can I say? And they'll say something with too many syllables, mm -hmm. and I'll go, well, let's reduce the syllables a little bit, and we do that. Okay. Um, and then so how would we finish this thing off? So we, well, we have to finish it off with, uh, we have four more bars to go. So why don't we talk about how he's from the South? Okay. Okay. Marco's from the South. What do we think of when someone's from the South? Educated. Uh, nice. Yes. Educated, very nice, well-rounded individuals. Sure. Right? Yes. Yeah. Lemonade stands. Um, why did I think of that? I don't know. <laughs> I think New Orleans. I think party. Right. People are fun down there. Yeah, no. Well, let's forget mean, though. Hillbillies, inbred. I mean, if we're going to. I think we're not. Let's I'm go trying mean. To dance you got to go mean. Party. I don't mean to get Nick all Nick Camerano here, but <laughs> let's talk about incest and they're all hillbillies. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to. I don't think we're trying to encourage the hate here. <laughs> As he's, no, it's been very nice to you so far. Yeah. Well, do we have anything in the notes? I just wrote down, he's from the South, so you think hick, redneck, unintelligent. Jeez, hip. I do not agree with this. <laughs> I actually graduated high school. Uh, Take that, Max. Uh, he as, did, as, did, as did my whole family. Okay. All right. I just didn't go to college because, because like, now I'm a famous professional wrestler. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Sorry, Marco. So we can say uneducated then. Not college educated. Yeah. Well, you don't have a college degree like me and Anthony do. There it is. That's great. Um, I don't think that's going to impress anybody. So let, let's say hill hillbilly is a great word. Hill well, I don't know if I agree with that. Hillbilly Jim is a great wrestler, though. Hillbilly sure. has a lot of things to rhyme with. Right. Sure. Um. So maybe something about his Lil Willie. Lil Willie, I was thinking that. Yeah, his Lil Willie. Yeah. Uh, hey, Marco, I heard you have a Lil Willie. Uh, something about he, you, you try to go south because you was a hillbilly or something like that. You deserve that, boo. <laughs> hey, guys, this, this, is, this is the process, We're not the thing. Oh, he's saying, oh, really? Well, that's hey, why. Hey, Marco. Hey, Marco. You think you could face me? Oh, really? Let's both pull down our pants. We'll see who's got the biggest Willie. There you go. Yeah. Hey. And it's him. It's him for sure. Sorry about that. <laughs> They've already left. That baby walked away. That was incredible. <laughs> it literally was like, I'm going to take my first steps and get the fuck out of here. So then the last thing is the go home line. Mm -hmm. And you need something good for this particular audience. And it could be something local. Mm. Uh, it could be something in the news. Mm. Got to be careful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe like ketchup on a hot dog kind of situation <laughs> here. 
No? Uh, I don't even know. What, the, what, what does that mean? It, local, big local reference. Well, you're asking for local topics. In Chicago, you would never put ketchup oh, on put a hot dog. On, uh, yes. So, now we can have this conversation, because we had, the, me and Anthony had this conversation off to the side and said, well, is this one too far? Um, yes. The answer is yes. Let's go. Well, you never know. I, I wouldn't say this on TV, but... Um, but I'll say it on your crappy yeah. little podcast. Hey, nobody, <laughs> nobody tweet this. This is secret. This is between friends. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Go ahead. I, I, I wanted the go home line since this is a big wrestling crowd, right? We all love wrestling. I wanted to say something about how he's going to get cut quicker than the NXT roster. <laughs> See? Touched a nerve. Right. Your, your reaction validates the things that I say. <laughs> You're feeding the beast. So? Too far? No, that's great. <laughs> All right, great. So what do we rhyme with the roster? The, the, the setup line doesn't matter. Kevin Costner. Point. Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. Yeah, Kevin Costner. What's, what's a Kevin Costner movie? Uh, Waterworld. Waterworld. <laughs> I'll send you to Waterworld like Kevin Costner. You'll get cut quicker than the NXT roster. There it is. Max Caster and Anthony Bowens, everybody. The Acclaim. Your podcast is great, Colt. I do love it. <laughs> <laughs> Big comeback. Give it up for these right, guys. Thank one you more very time. much. Yeah. And thank you for allowing us to never look at Nick Camarado the same way ever again. Now, now comedy and wrestling has uh, a way of fixing itself and being so magical into one of the greatest segues of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next guest on the show, Jeff and Matt from 2.0. <laughs> 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 all right, welcome, 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 welcome. Speaking of... Uh, yeah, we, we, we brought somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Garcia has came out. Our son. I'm so sorry. We have seven microphones in the back, but only yeah. three of them seem to work. You know what's funny? Grab a chair. Grab a chair, son. Go get a chair. Wait, that's how you treat him? Yeah. Well, he lacks discipline at times. You know, we're very disciplined no. daddy. No, we're sharing a mic. Yeah, we're all sharing We're sharing mic. three Maybe there we Marty. go. We got us two here. Oh, you okay. three or you... Th this is great. Testing. Okay. So I this is a good Daniel, one. This is a good one. I was telling Daniel yesterday we're going to be coming on your podcast. And he goes, Colt, I love Colt. When I was a little kid, I bought a headband at an indie event. Now I'm thinking this is 2005. 2014. 2014. <laughs> I was 15 years into my professional wrestling career. Do you remember him coming up to you? It was a uh, ESW wrestling in Lockport. I have the Cabanarama headband. I do. How about that? And I, I just want you to know that I sewed that and pressed that myself at Pro Wrestling Tees. Did you wear it to school the next day? Like, man, wait till they see this. They're not gonna know what hit them. I was in high school. I did not. I did not. <laughs> He's trying to be cool. Trying to be cool in high school and buying a Colt Cabana headband. Uh, big hit with the ladies. That's why big I didn't hit. wear it to school. <laughs> Ward around my house. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. How are you doing? Hey, Colt. Fantastic. Hello, everybody. How are you enjoying the world of AEW, All Elite Wrestling? We are caught in a tornado. <laughs> it's been it's unbelievable. In the best possible way. Yeah. In the best possible way. Now, there you go. A Texas tornado, if you will. Let's hope your legs stay on, right? <laughs> wow. That's a Kerry Von Eric joke. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, Marty, I, I, was, I was saying to Matt the other day, I, I was listening to some of his promos, Yeah, and maybe the people here from Chicago may agree or disagree, but this guy's got a Southside accent if I've, I've ever this, heard yeah. one. What? He, he would have gotten a, a role in Tony and Tina's wedding at any point ever. Marty, I hear give, it. give Matt some, some lines that he can then repeat. Uh, I went to the, the Jewel over by there. I, I went, went to the Jewel down on 55th and Cermak. I went to the Jewel down on 55th and Cermak. Sir Mac. No? Uh, how about, uh, what do you I'm, want from Portillo's? What do you want from Portillo's? Hey, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about a beef dry? How about a beef dry? No, I'm saying, do you want a beef dry? <laughs> you want a beef dry? <laughs> no, stop it. Oh. Okay, all right. 
Uh, but that's, and both of you guys, that's a, a Montreal accent, I guess. Okay, so here's the thing about the accent. Um, Marty. His is very much... N like northeast end Montreal because our group of friends back home a bunch of Italians so you eventually start taking on the Italian because you just they take speak it with so much inflection you just take it in um, you know so me I me I like to uh, that's how they speak me I me I yeah. me I uh, I it, it's a funny thing back home I always still get the oh you have an accent where are you from I'm like I'm from here yes. I'm from here so uh, it, it would happen so often that I just start making up stories I remember one of the first time I went to like a party with uh, I had first met my wife and we go to this party and of course I start getting that question you have an accent where are you from so I just started to go on about how I was from Amsterdam and I had just done a, a trip to Amsterdam so I was just telling him about all this stuff and I set this roost throughout the party and I thought I was nailing it until the people started talking in between each other and uh, I got outed yeah I got outed yeah. how about that <laughs> I don't have a I, my. What's going on? There's a C Cesar's hanging out and oh, having a party Marcus. over there. You guys need to outshow them. The wingmen. Camarado's freestyling huh. over there. Oh, yeah. Camarado's here. Camarado's here. The uh, freak beast. <laughs> now you guys uh, have been a tag together. Years. Twenty years. Has it 20 been twenty years? years? Yeah. Yeah. Known each other since yeah, the third grade. Yeah. Were you one of these 14-year-old wrestlers? 17. Yeah, 16, 17 we started, yeah. So they, they, let, they let them, in Canada, you can drink when you're, when you're 17, you can out wrestle of, when you're 17. Womb. Out yeah. of the womb. Out of the womb. Yeah. You turn 14 and they go, Jacques Rougeau is right over there. Go yeah. talk to him. Give us your best That's Jacques Rougeau story, please. Oh, boy, oh. do we have a good one. <laughs> And context. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> when we started trying to be professional wrestlers, it was the you know, beginnings of the internet. You know, Google wasn't even a thing yet, so you would have to no. bing something. You, I'm sure you remember. Lycos. Lycos. Angel uh, Fire. Did you uh, Fire. ask Jeeves about how to get in the biz? <laughs> Definitely asked Jeeves a time or two. But it's not like there was just wrestling school that you knew of. I mean, there was maybe one or two independent promotions, and it wasn't even that much of a, of a thing. So, of course, being from Montreal, the only guy you know is Jacques Rougeau. I mean, he's the Mountie. The Mountie. So we end up going to his school. We, we found out about it through a radio oh, wrestling I show. I love how you guys are finishing like Don't that. Don't you like oh. finishing each other's oh, sentences, sentences about sandwiches? sandwiches. Yeah. Okay, amazing. <laughs> well, what's going on? I got real excited how you set him up and then you start knocking it down. It just got me really excited. Dream podcast guest for Colt here. He's loving this. <laughs> so, so we end up at the school and he goes, I'm going to give you guys a body slam. A body slam. A body slam. Okay, no problem. Jock picks us up. He slams us down. Nice and polite. Very Okay, cool. no problem. Now he goes... Now, you're going to body slam me. Now, go, paint this picture in your huh? mind for a second. We're like 15 years old, you know, maybe just getting through puberty. 130 pounds, soaking wet. Just, just bought a Mountie headband at a local <laughs> indie show. <laughs> Years away from buying that Cabanarama headband, but go ahead. Jacques Rougeau, he's a pretty big guy. I don't know, 6'2", 250, something Stocky like that, guy. right? So he chooses me. I'm going to body slam him. I'm going to be the guy to body slam him. So go, Okay. He comes in, I pick him up, and I'm struggling. I'm really <laughs> struggling here, guys. And I get him up here, and I don't know what to do. So I just dropped him. <laughs> Bam! How am I supposed right to know what shoulder. to do? So let's Legs do on his neck. Okay, so you're up, so let's do a reenactment. Are we talking Luger Yoko on the oh. Intrepid? Way worse. <laughs> Way worse. I'll take this. Right. So, so Jacques goes down on his shoulder, right? Now he pops up, and again, 16-year-old skinny kid, and he's coming in hot. You have no respect for me. You, I give you my body, and you drop me like. And he Starts goes shoving nuts. me. I'm terrified. I'm a child, guys. <laughs> it's a child. Ready to cry. You guys understand? <laughs> he's ready to cry. Did you press charges? No. We no, did. Yeah, I gave him two thousand bucks to, to, <laughs> to train at his school. That's, that's, that's what, no, we, we got, it wasn't a funny story. I don't know, but this guy got in my face. Yeah, we get in the I'm car. We get in the car afterwards. And we're excited because hey, we're going to be professional wrestlers. And uh, my dad had taken us there, so he's driving us home, and we're kind of excited. He's almost in tears because of a traumatic experience. And my dad, while he's driving, just goes, "Yeah, there's no way I'm giving that used car salesman four thousand uh, dollars." To us. He is a legend, the Mountie, WrestleMania. But to someone who does not know him, he's just a schmuck trying to scam kids out of money. So what's funny is, like, like three months later, he had a show, and I guess he was injured, so he had to pull himself off the show, and I take credit for injuring him. There it is. There it is. Put Jacques Rougeau on the shelf. How do you like that? Wow, wow. And, and I, I guess on the flip side, 
in a in a past life, yeah. you were another Canadian's name, a, a Martel. Oh yes, yes, in a past life, yeah, I was Martel, yeah. As an ECW chant comes out for <laughs> Rick the Model Martel. A little confused. Do you guys have history with him? Is he floating around the city? And by the city, I just assume Canada is one city. Like yes. <laughs> um, which is, actually happens more often than you'd think. You'd be like, oh, he's from Canada. You know him. Or she's from Canada. Yeah, you know. Of course. Yeah, we all Mike, know each Mike other. Mike Quackenbush never figured it out. <laughs> he just assumed we were all neighbors. All neighbors. Oh, you could drive seven hours to go pick a guy up in Winnipeg? <laughs> of course. Um, what? So Rick Martel became a myth around Montreal for a really long time because he just disappeared from wrestling. You'd never see him anywhere. You never heard from him. And then eventually he started popping up in places like this ghost. And you're like, oh, go and meet Rick Martel. He's a great guy. Local, still great such guy, a Rick babe, Martin. right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So handsome. A, uh, Silver Fox. Huge hands, guys. Huge hands on this Huge man. hands. Yeah, this is getting weird. Okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And finally, we have we have a new addition to the team. Oh yeah, Mr. Garcia. How do you, how do you, how do you? Should we give it to him? How do you meet up with these kids? I'm their son, obviously. I'm their son. <laughs> Our son. As they always say, I'm their son. No, I met them a couple years ago. Don't at... say nah. <laughs> You're their I didn't son. Say nah. It's a it's a uh, just a phrase in Buffalo. We say nah for everything. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I met them a few years ago with a show in Montreal, and um. As I was on my way in, they were kind of on their way out, and then we just reconnected a couple months ago, and we got the ball rolling, and I feel like we have really good chemistry right off the bat. Uh, they're two people who I really enjoy learning from. Uh, that, this guy agrees over here for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to learn from 2.0 too. And he so clearly this was the plan. You guys get released, and then you pair up with him, and then you're on Dynamite and Rampage, and you're like, oh, so man. huge part of the show. It was yeah. a three -year plan. Yeah. Are you all talking to each other like, what is happening right now? Like, are we really do, gonna bump for Sting right now? Like, were you all three just like, what is our life right now? We, it's, we were just, oh. It, it's pretty constant, but yeah, it, it is a lot of that. So we were doing their show in the hotel room yesterday, like the uh, YouTube thing. Hey, quiet down! Is this Colorado again? <laughs> is that the freak beast? <laughs> but uh, we were saying, like, we haven't known each other for that long, but we feel like we've lived seven lives over the past month with each other, and it's really rushed the process of us uh, becoming pretty close friends over this past month. A hatred for Sting has really developed our there bond. It is. <laughs> there Sting it is. or Jeff Farmer is a real piece of garbage. Wow. Nothing can bond you more than a hatred for Sting, I'll tell you that right now. Well, I, I think all of us have a love for Sting, is that correct? <laughs> that brings us all together. Um, anything else on the way out, friends? I don't know. You got a message for the people? Well, we love you. Yeah. You got a YouTube show? We do have a you. Thank you. You are. Oh, pretty, have you done this before? Have you done this before? What a professional. The show rules on, on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, yeah, ahead. and we're just... Uh, have you done this before? <laughs> never. never. <laughs> you'd, you'd never know it. But yeah, the show rules on YouTube. We have a Sunday morning show. Sunday Every morning. Sunday morning, you, you got get your morning. coffee. You Did can you? go back and watch it this morning. We're always on there putting out stuff, having a good time, yeah. having an old chat with the people, and most of all, we're happy to be part of the team over here. All right, the Oprahs of Montreal. Yeah. 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Cole. <laughs> I'm going to sign that headband right. for you. Not a bug. It's 10 bucks. 10 bucks on a signature, okay? Got a good yeah. Got a good good parents there. Okay, we have a couple more guests. Uh, at this point I, I actually we want to play a little bit of a game while we got everybody here. Oh yeah. And uh, uh at this point uh these this this group has been hosting this whole thing. Yeah. So I say we bring them on stage. Uh please welcome the wingman. <laughs> Peter Avalon, Cesar Maroni, J.D. Drake, and Ryan Emmett. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Uh, right, I think welcome, this. Welcome, welcome. So I think we should put Peter in a seat. Yeah, and Peter. everyone else should be behind. Oh yeah, yeah. This That's, is this is gonna be like a little bit of a game show. Right next to me, Peter. Sorry about that. I stole your chair, there, bud. All right. Okay. So. We thought to ourselves, do they? Does Peter have a microphone? Oh, not in I got. Okay. This is like the loudest think, microphone ever. I think you three should be behind Peter here. There you go. There you go. Uh, we we thought we have the wingman here. 
These guys are uh, they're handsome. Go- handsome. We are handsome. handsome. Give me the adjectives. We are handsome. Taut. Beautiful. Supple. Tough. Supple. Dripping. Dripping. Throbbing. Throbbing. Svelte. Svelte. Handsome. Beautiful. Brazilian. Pretty. Brazilian. Cold. Damn it. I'm not just I, not as close to your mouth. You have to hear that. You have to hear that. I don't hear it. I want to. I want to. <laughs> Beautiful. Handsome. Any other words? Dapper, sophisticated, manicured, classy, well, you know, manicured, well, sexy. Man- yes. So waxed. Waxed. waxed, vaxed, waxed, hot boy summer. There it is. So Marty and I thought to ourselves, we should play a little game and, and see how tight of a sexy, waxed, vaxed, supple, uh, Brazilian, Brazilian, Brazilian wax, Brazilian wax, Brazilian waxed. Sense. Bleached, Brazilian, Brazilian bleached. bleached. Crew that you are. Yes. And my boomer brain went right to the newlywed game. Oh. Find oh. Find out who the best wingman is. Find out who the best wingman is. So here, here's how this is going to work. Uh, we are going to ask a question. We already have Peter's answer. These three will answer what they thought Peter answered the question with. There it is. Then Peter will reveal, and whoever gets the most correct or points will be decided the best wingman. Sound good? Yeah. I'll hold this for you so you can do that. All right. Do you remember our questions, Marty? Absolutely. Oh, let me get them. <laughs> Mike, this should be fun. I have all the questions right here. Now, don't answer yet. We're going to let all three of them answer. All right. Right out of the gate, we went real strong, and we asked pretty Peter Avalon, who is the best wingman? Who's the best wingman? Out at the club, having a good time. Who's the best wingman? We'll start with Ryan. Ryan, who you say that Peter said? I think deep down, Peter knows that such a question is uh, a paradox. There is no best wingman. The definition of wingman is if we're at a club and a girl is interested, we pitch the other guy, and then that guy pitches the next guy. He pitch, it's, a, it's a circular nature. There is no best wingman. The limit does not exist. So you're, you're saying no. Okay. No, no well, one. We're going to lock that answer in as nobody. Nobody. All right, Cesar? All wingmen are the best wingmen. Okay. Not choosing any. All right, all right. No, no, that's not your answer. You said no. (laughs) JD. All right, JD. You don't tell him what he did and didn't say. Okay? So, Peter said the best wingmen were his wingmen. His wingmen. All right, Peter, and would you please reveal to the crowd here your answer who is the best wingman? Peter Avalon says. All of them. Oh. Point to Cesar Bonone. Wow. Very interesting. All right. Question number two. This is going to be a tough one, Peter. Who would you say is the most fashionable wingman? Oh, no. They're going to answer first. Uh, let's start with JD first. Nice changing it up. It's very you, professional. So it doesn't have to be me. It's actually Ryan. I mean, he dresses this way because he dresses us better than him. Ah. What better wingman? Lifting people up by dressing down. Very nice. <laughs> Says that. He is eyeing up JD right now. Look at this. No, look at this. Do I have to say his name? I'll, I'll say it anyway. J.D. Drake is the best. All right, says our, says All right J.D. Drake. Wait a minute. I'm over here. That's what... No, no, he picked That's you as the answer. That's fair, yeah. but you, you introduce him. No, no, no. You're Ryan, a... please, uh, please lock in your final answer. Don't call him Nick. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing a different game show right now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think if, uh, for those who can't see, uh, who will be listening to this digitally and on all platforms, Cesar is a much larger version of Peter right now. <laughs> and I think Peter thinks of Cesar as the best dress because he dresses like him. So it's another paradox. It's another mental thing. But I think he would choose his protege, Cesar. All right. All right. And let's get that answer. Peter, who would you say is the most fashionable wingman? Shady Drake. Going with J.D. Whoa, Cesar Bononi, 2 0 in the lead. He's very handsome. He's just, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. 
J.D. Drake is the first graduate of the Wingman Makeover program, so that's a good sign. Absolutely. That's a great sign. They did it for him. They could do it for you. All right, here's a, uh, here's a serious in-ring question. Since the Wingmen have been uh, put together, who has whipped Peter's ass the most? Oh, shit. J.D., don't. don't. Uh, as a part of, like, which one of us have whipped his ass It can either be you or anyone that, oh, uh, while you were at ringside for a match. A -A Since the Wingmen right. have been put together, um, who has whipped Peter's ass the most? Um. <laughs> Absolutely not. And if you bring that name up again, I'll chop you in the throat. Oh! Um, <laughs> probably Julia Hart. All right, Julia Hart. Uh, if I had to guess, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say this, but Leva. Leva. You have been whooping his ass just mentally. Well, since we're talking about in the ring, and I don't like to remember that, that brings me... It's okay. It's okay. That triggers me a little bit. It's okay. Let it out. Let it out, Cesar. Let it out, buddy. I don't even like to say his name because he did the same to me last week. That, that's got to be Sting. Oh, God, Sting. Uh, we got Julia Hart. We got Leva Bates and, and Sting. And we've got Sting. Peter? All right, Peter, what is your answer? Who's whipped your ass the most? Sting. Sting. Cesar's got Are you guys points. best friends now? This is insane. We've got a 3-0 lead. All right. Let's get, uh, let's get two more questions in here real quick. Uh, which would Peter say has the fastest count of all of the referees here in AEW? Aubrey. Okay, there it goes. Cesar jumping out quick with Aubrey. Ryan, what do you say? Uh, it's Aubrey. Aubrey. And JD? And it's based on the two gun club matches we've had, definitely... Aubrey. All right. And your answer is Aubrey. Aubrey. Is that a compliment or not? I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. And let's uh, let's end the show with a, a possible uh, and the dream game. booking and the game. It's, the game's over. Cesar's won the game <laughs> and he's won Peter's heart. But uh, yeah. who would you guys say that Peter would pick to be the dream fifth member of the Wingmen? That's easy. It's a creator, the father. Of the wingman, Christian Cage. Christian Cage, the father of the wingman. All right, Ryan. Who said that? First off, which one of you said that? I think we could do a live chop or something, maybe. He's there. Listen, dude. No, absolutely not. You look like one of Colin Kaepernick's cronies. And you're over here talking about Colin. Can you not see this is not Nick? Can you not see? How much beer have you had? That's not what he uses. Nick does not even exist. JD. I'll kill you. <laughs> we'll edit that out. JD, I appreciate it. He was suggesting Dolph join the wingman. No, no. <laughs> Does this happen a lot? Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Who, oh who would your dream upset. fifth wingman be? My, <laughs> my dream fifth wingman is... Uh, uh, sorry, who, would, who did Peter say would be his dream fifth wingman? Peter would choose someone who we've seen all day long today in many different shapes and sizes, Orange Cassidy. Ah. Orange Cassidy, okay. All right. JD, who would his dream wingman be? Dolph Ziggler. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> the comedy stylings of JD Drake. I just want to say we were, JD, we were not supposed to spoil anything for the big show tonight. The big show later. All right. Uh, and, I, and I'm Everybody sure knows. that there's no way that Cesar got a perfect score. Uh, who would you say would your dream member of the wingman be? It's Christian! Uh, these guys, These unbelievable. Two, ladies and gentlemen, the best wingmen, Cesar and Peter. What? Give it up wow. for our hosts of the, of the barbecue. The wingman, everybody. The wingman. That is unbelievable. That is just very impressive. <laughs> 
Wow. Uh, Did you think somebody would have a perfect score in that game? I, there is no way, but when those two came up looking like yes. they did, yeah. it makes all the sense in the world. Uh, we do have one last guest. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then I think we're. I was gonna do a little Q and A. Do a Q and A or something. Okay. Yeah. That um, works. But uh, why don't you introduce our next guest? Because okay. this is exciting. Uh, this is just a weird uh, Illinois state law. Whenever there's a wrestling event, and I hate to bring up WWE, but uh, they get first refusal if they want. I know, guys. I know. Uh, but unfortunately, um, this is uh, Missy from WWE uh, PR HR. All right, guys. Just we we just. <laughs> We we just have to get this over with. We have to do it legally. I get this WWE all can. All the time, I get this all the time, and I know that you're all people and you're all members of this AEW universe. Let them get I'm it sorry. out. Yeah, they don't really say AEW universe. I don't know. If you... Oh, they don't say that. Well, no. what do you call them, Marks? Just fans. Jesus. <laughs> Wow. Missy, you don't have to fight everybody. It's okay. You're you you're know, good who you are. I tried are. to get that nice gentleman with the big chain. I walked up with my clipboard when he was sitting over there, and I just gave him a summons. And he goes, is that how they're doing this now? And I said, yeah, we're that desperate. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, you've seen me before in several viral videos, right, Cole? You yes. got big views on... Oh, my God. Thank you. Nice spices. You working on those? How yeah, tall are you? But I'm over I'm, o <laughs> I'm over 24. I don't think you have any interest in me. Oh, yeah. We're doing 205 Live 24-7 and kind of combining. You have to be under 24, working seven days a week. 205 is your height in uh, meters. Okay. okay. That's very convoluted, Missy. Well... AEW is not the only one that's all out. I'm here to announce to you wrestling sports entertainment fans that um, WWE is about to be all out of the wrestling industry. We're selling to Disney in two weeks. Oh, <laughs> oh awesome, Whoa. I guess. Yeah, that's so I'm weird. hearing like um, Vince, uh, our still fearless leader, left me here to conduct an exit interview with you and kind of get some ideas on what Disney should do with the WWE property. Cold, are you excited? You would follow the wrestling stuff? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> what is an exit interview for like, the WWE being sold? Bye, you guys. Okay. And girls and women. Okay. And All right. them. In. Are you guys okay if Missy asks us some questions about the WWE? Legally, you have to be. All right, Missy, go ahead. So we're taking over Galaxy's Edge because we made such a mess of Star Wars. We as <laughs> Disney now. And I need your dumb opinions on some ride-along concepts that we're designing. So just cheer, boo, like we made you do in the Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> so these are, pr like... Potential WWE rides at Disney? Yeah, Smuggler's Run. Experience firsthand how it felt to be stranded on the plane in Saudi Arabia while your boss flees home with millions. Okay. So you would just sit on an airplane for like hours yeah, on it's end? hot and nobody has any water and the bathroom's getting full. Okay. And these are the people that you idolize. Okay. okay. Space Mountain, we're just going to give it to Ric Flair. Okay. That's cool. And hey, he can, just like he gave it, he just like he gave it to so many over the years. That's the point of the ride. He yeah. can say whatever he wants okay. about the women that he's taken to his own space mountain. We don't really understand what that means, but we think it's, it'll be great for the <laughs> boomers. Um, it's a small world after all. That's where all those little indie wrestlers go and sing their songs of high flying coordinated moves <laughs> and hot dog and a handshake and wheels meet again on the way up and down, you know, that kind of deal. <laughs> I don't think you guys like it, but that's probably for the best because you're not the people we're aiming for at the <laughs> WWE. Okay. I mean, Disney. I yeah, mean Disney. Disney. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think about a video game arcade? Will that keep Adam Cole? <laughs> we'll give him unlimited tokens. Like, what do you think? He can just keep playing. <laughs> like a thing leave. on his belt where he could just keep clicking like out at tokens? Like Casino Royale. Okay, okay. Okay, so what about this one? This is the last one. The Haunted Man's Son. It's an Omnimover ride of every relationship milestone that Vince and Shane have had together. <laughs> okay. A father-son. Okay. Don't sa sounds like they're scared already. I think so. Yeah, it sounds like a very scary ride. Even though we're selling, WWE is still in charge. We know what teens want. We know what wrestling fans want. <laughs> Big, frighteningly large men who know nothing about wrestling and love football, and they also don't talk to their parents so much. Okay. We can just own them. Guys, it'll be fun, because why do you want, like... Like, why do you AEW people want, like, like Jungle Boy, this little, like, pecs and this, like, long hair? And, like, 
young and hot. Like, <laughs> when's Hook gonna take his shirt off again? <laughs> like, why do you want that? I, I think they like those Wait, are guys. You, are you asked? Are you, can we get those nips out? I'm so <laughs> yeah, tired. I'm so <laughs> I've been working for WWE for 14 years. I'm exhausted. I, I have to wear a three-piece suit every day, and if I sneeze in front of Vince McMahon, I go to hell, which is just <laughs> the performance center to train more. I'm so sorry. I also like that at WWE corporate, it's okay, the leader of it, to ask someone to get their nips out. Hey, shh, can you hold on a second? I just got some breaking news I'd like to share with everyone on behalf of the WWE WWE has come to terms on the releases of Michael Cole. We're just done with him. <laughs> um, Roman Reigns, uh, he tested positive for a wellness violation of being too positive uh, about wrestling and his hopes and dreams. Okay. Um, Alexa Bliss has been released, but turns out Lily's just signed for five more years. Okay. The winking doll. Okay. Um, uh-oh, we released Bruce Pritchard right before we sell. Why are you back. winking? Huh? Okay. I got something in my eye because um, it's still real to me, darn it. Okay. <laughs> but we wish all of those gentlemen and ladies, oh, Shane McMahon, Vince forgot who he was, is also released. He's gone. Oh, no. He's gone. Oh, wow. We wish them the best of luck in their future endeavors, but don't worry about Vince, Colt. I know you always worry about people I do. and you care. I do. He has a proven, Vince McMahon has a proven track record outside of sports entertainment. I mean, the World Bodybuilding Federation, the IKO Pro Support Supplement <laughs> line. Feed me more of that, Marty. Did you say, I, is that IKO Pro? IKO. Isn't that what Randy Orton does? No, I, it's IKO Pro, the oh, health supplement. I didn't supplements. work here then. I'm a lot younger okay. than you, Marty. Okay. Uh, the TV show, I Love WDF, WF New York. No, it's based, a restaurant. It was a restaurant. the restaurant, WWF New York. Will you let me do the <laughs> I'm one? so sorry. Like, you're acting like you wrote these. I didn't write any of these. The WWF Casino, Vince had that. It's still in developmental hell. <laughs> XFL both times. <laughs> oh, uh, Vince did so well promoting Sugar Ray Leonard fights. You guys remember that? <laughs> WWE Films. Yeah. He's going to be fine, Marty. Okay. And Colt. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is your name Scotty? You look so familiar. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh look at this. I just, got, I just got this directly from WWE. In a moment of real sincerity... I want to thank Colt Cabana, or as we love to call him, Scotty Goldman, for always opening his heart and his platform to this WWE requirement of having me here. Colt, you've been a paragon of good behavior. You've been a leader in the locker room, which is why, for old time's sake, we're going to release you again. Best of luck oh, in your future endeavors. We always own on. every single one of you, and you can uh, never have right. any fun with a your true cute little dream sexy come true. wrestler. All right. Well, I guess give it up for the new Disney employee, Missy, everybody. Now working for Disney. <laughs> wow. What a hey! You two make a fun little team there. I don't know. There were some just some uh, sparks there. There, there was some banter back yeah, and some forth. Yeah, sparky plugs. Reminds me a lot. <laughs> Speaking of plugs, reminds me a lot of a podcast yeah. uh, that I like to listen to called Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, where, that's a fun podcast. You wherever should you can get podcasts. Yes. They do bits uh, and they're very <laughs> funny. Yes. Thank um, you. I think I've heard Missy on that I, before. Yeah. You might hear her on our podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having her on. It's yeah. a, a big get. Happy to have it. Uh, I, usually, I like to finish off these live podcasts with a little bit of a Q&A. I know we got a lot of great fans out here. Um, I, maybe, we can only do one or maybe one. Uh, we'll do a bunch. Whatever. Oh, okay. Right uh, Marty, maybe yeah. go head on out to the crowd. See if anyone wants to raise their hand right. and ask a question. All right. Here, little dude, come on up here real quick. This is a real loud mic. Just talk right into it. What's, so, What's your name? Milo. Say hi to Milo, everybody. <laughs> All right, Milo, you have a question for Colt Cabana? Yeah. All right, go ahead. So, why did you join AEW? Good question by Milo. Colt, why did you join AEW? Well, I joined AEW right here in Chicago, my hometown, yeah. and Revolution. And uh, I had been wrestling for years with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. And they were like, Colt, we got a place where you could do whatever you want, have the best time. It is great, and hey, you'll also get to be on national television. Uh, do you want to join? And I said, yes, yeah, sign me up, and here I am, part of the team, and happy to be here. All right. Thank you, buddy. Good question, Milo. Good question. Who else Thank has you. a question here? Come on up here. Uh, Hurricane shirt, come on up here. It's weird to have you come out there. All right. Uh, what's your name? Bryce. All right, Bryce, go ahead. All right, so I've got a problem. Um, I get 
my girlfriend to a couple of wrestling events, and then, uh, you know, I go, I don't need to go to everything. You know, this week she talked to me. We had tickets for this, but we didn't have Rampage and everything else. She was like, no, I need to go. We go every time in Chicago. So what do you do when your girlfriend loves wrestling more than you? Whoa. Oh. Good question. What do you do when your girlfriend loves wrestling? First of all, there you go. Give me that yeah. mic. Good question. Uh, what do you do when, okay, first of all, uh, hold on, is there, she's right there? Yeah, come up here. Come up here, too. I'm going to teach. Yeah. Bryce, what's your, what's your girlfriend's name? Dana. Dana. All right, give it up for Dana, everybody. Dana, Dana come on up here. This is crazy. Hey, come on over here, Dana. Dana, I'll tell you what, I, because I'm going to teach you a wrestling move here, Dana. Oh, very nice. I want you to take this back to the bedroom with him. All right? <laughs> because if you love wrestling more, you got to know how to wrestle her more, all right? So check out. Come here. We're going to teach you how to lock up. Real oh, quick, all right. Here all right? we go. Stand or lock up. Come over here. All right. Colt's going to teach you how to lock up. So, no, you're going to lock up with him. Okay. All right. You're going to put your left foot forward. Okay. And then we're going to step together. You're going to put your arms straight. And then your right arm behind my neck. Okay? No, this arm. There you go. All right. There's the lock up. And then I'm going to go into a go behind where I go behind you. Will you marry me? <laughs> Yes. She said yes. Hey! <laughs> All right, Dana and Bryce, everybody. Wow. That was the coolest. The art of wrestling couple. Oh my God. Buddy, that was a moment. Well, I want everyone to go over, congratulate those two. I want everyone to have the greatest of time over at the, uh, at the, uh, at the pay-per-view. Enjoy yourselves. This is all of a community that we all love. Let's thank our guests one more time. Marty DeRosa here helping out. Sarah Shockey. Marco Stunt, the wingman, the wingman 3.0, Daniel Garcia. And uh, let's give a big round of applause for Colt Cabana for everything he's done for independent wrestling. And if it wasn't for Colt and guys like him, we wouldn't be here today enjoying this amazing event. Colt Cabana, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Remember, this is sponsored by Pro Wrestling Tees, the greatest wrestling company, the greatest wrestling t-shirt company in the world. I'll be over there hanging out if anyone, I do have some stuff if you want it, or I'm happy to take pictures and say hello as long as I can before I have to go over to the event. Uh, this has been the Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks.